Hello everyone, my name is Notepad Anon, and I write games for fun. So what are we working on today? Well, today we're going to be attempting to get the Saga of Blood, Iron, and Soil into a workable state. As of right now, I've got the details, the rough details in place. I've got all the, the broad scope ideas, but I need to narrow it down. I need to go in there with a fine tooth comb and make it beautiful. Which is a lot harder than you think it is. <laughs> trust me. Trust me. Trust me. It's, uh, so, what have I actually done? Well, I kind of did some basic kind of, like, research and stuff, and I've got this. So, roughly speaking, Iceland can be summarized as starting in 874 when, Reyk when uh, Reykjavik is founded. From 874 to about 900 is the mass settlement period. Pretty much everyone's running from Harald Fairhair in Norway and settling in Iceland because the Faroe Islands aren't big enough and nobody wants to live in fucking Scotland. So, we have a bunch of these exiles and weirdos showing up for about 30 years. This is where the game begins, and this is where I'm going to call the Mystic Era. The Mystic Era is exactly what you think it is. It's a little bit mystic, it's a little bit weird, and it's very shrouded in mystery. It's, we don't really have that much on it. Pretty much almost, uh, well, the thing is, it wouldn't even be Scotland. It would literally be the islands around Scotland, because that's what the Norse owned. Nobody wanted to deal with the Celts or the Picts. Like, the issue is, pretty much from this era is entirely done by the sagas themselves, and these sagas are perhaps not the... best <laughs> when it comes to actually recounting things at a one-to-one -one basis. For many of these sagas, they were stories, they were oral tradition that were written down by people who would literally just go to families being like, well, I hear you have some interesting stories to tell. And be like, yeah, my grandpa, to my great, 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 great ancestor totally killed a giant who was, like, trying to eat people around here. 1v1'd him. It was amazing. And everyone was like, this makes complete sense. Just write that shit in. But it's also the best way we actually have, because there wasn't really any written language for a lot of these guys. So then we have about 830. We have this gap from about 900 to 930, where I don't really, I can't really find anything definite. It just, stuff happened. Uh, but that was when the All Thing was formalized, and that was t taking place in Thingvellir, and that was also when the Grey Goose Lots were introduced. Now, what are the Grey Goose Lots? Well, if we go here, the Grey Goose Lots can roughly be summarized as a set of laws that were taken over from Norway, brought over here, and that was... They were adopted as law. And, but that is when you also got things such as, what do you do with Christians? What do we do with the assembly? How do we treat homicide? What are the Vergild of individual peoples? What's, what does the law speaker have to learn? What does the law council have to learn? What is the court laws? It's shit like that. But this was also the year the All Thing was also formalized. Pretty much the All Thing is what you can consider to be the first real parliament in the world. You had a bunch of these tribal chiefs come together at a at the thing called literally the All Thing. I believe it's something along the lines of a, like a meeting of some sort. Like that's the, the formal definition of the All Thing. Everyone came together and they voted on things. Or you brought the court like, hey, this asshole over here stole my sheep. I want compensation, and then he'll then it's laws, it's going over things. It's also saying there's famine on the left side of the island. Can we get some assistance? And everyone's like, "Cool, yeah, let's bring over some assistance, and you'll look good." And this was a yearly convention, effectively. Every year, these guys would meet and they would discuss things, and then they would go home. And this would take place at Thingvellir, which Thingvellir is actually a real place. It is now a national park. Yes, this is Stingvalir. Uh, very pretty little location, but pretty much picture these guys erecting a, a monument, and then the law speaker shows up, who is pretty much 
here's where things get weird. The law speaker had no legal authority. He was not the king or anything. He was pretty much the guy who knew all the laws. And he would arbitrate more than anything. He would say, well, according to the law, X, Y, and Z is the case here. And then according to the law over here, it's ABC. So looking at things from objectively speaking, you're in the right, you're in the wrong. But it would also be like, what do we do in this situation? What do we do here? He didn't have any real authority. He did, however, have kind of that... um beyond authority i think that would be like a better like a good way of even thinking about it he had an authority beyond just i have power and you are weak it, yeah it's effectively like an elected arbiter position and but he still had like significant influence but he couldn't like order someone to do something that is where a lot of the feuds take place the blood feuds and a lot of when we think of like viking feuds and shit like that it was because of these situations where the law kind of got a little bit wonky or there wasn't any good ones. That was the issue. Like if there isn't any good answer to it. Yeah. Effectively Viking judge Judy. Yeah. And uh, there are, are actually a list. They actually have a list. I wonder if I can find the law speaker list. Uh, Icelandic. Like, th this is the technical list. And who was the lawman of each province of Sweden and then in Iceland? Like, here are the list of every single lawman in, I in Iceland because they wrote all these down because they were this that important. They served for three years. And I don't think they could get reelected. And then you have things like this where it's just like if you couldn't memorize the law or you weren't loud enough, you would get replaced. So yeah, it was actually very fascinating of just like who was getting elected, who wasn't. Yeah, because they thought it was important. Like we need to keep record. So yeah, this is actually a fairly detailed list. And some of these guys actually know others aren't. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put this list in, effectively. I would have to put this list in the, the game itself as a method to allow people to say the current law speaker is Jean Enassen or the current law speaker is Grimir Sven uh, Sventingson. We know Grimir Sventing Sventingson is the current law speaker. Do we know anything about Grim Grimir Sventingson? Nothing. We know nothing about him. He just has a name. Because he was important, and he was a guy who was important at that time to do a thing. And I was like, okay, okay, cool, Poggers. Poggers in the chat, we can do this. And uh, I'm going to try to do my best to, uh, you know, do everything there. But it's like, okay, we have like a very distinct thing here. But that is when, in 34 years later, in 864, is when we had the... I guess you would call it the, the formalization of what the fuck? Uh, it's weird. Cause I have one ad. Let's say you Twitch encourages you to do ads. There's one ad when you start up and then I run one ad every hour for one minute. Those are the only ads you should see. Hmm. Twitch, what are you doing? Twitch, what are you doing? Ah, I'll have to look into that. But overall, 864 is when the actual, uh, I would say, formalization of the court occurred. This is when the quarter courts were, were assumed. These were literally like seasonal courts that people would have to hold who were operated by these 39 chieftainships. But that would be kind of a difficult way of putting that because they were considered to be goatee and they were pretty much what we would consider to be medieval lords in a way. They own, they, their job was to protect everybody. And being like, well, if we have a problem, we're going to go to you to arbitrate on our behalf. And those 39 guys became the all thing at the end of the day. They became the main parliament. However, the weird thing is about these particular, the, these goatee ships, these, uh, 
these goatee ships, these, uh, it, it's get, the terms get weird. These chieftains, effect, we'll call them chieftains for right now. These chieftains, the idea which was weird was that technically these were not hereditary. These were not technically a hereditary title. I could be the chieftain of an area. Gautier ships. I could be, say, the uh, chieftain of an, of an area. And I'm like, my job is to protect everybody and, you know, bring it up to court and stuff. However, you say, I want you. I want to take over your title. I want to take over this title. You don't have enough men. You don't have enough people. And I've tr I'm, I'm pretty much richer and more powerful than you. And I'm also younger. I could literally sell you the title of, ch of chieftain, and now you would be the chieftain of that particular thing. These were like a bought and sold commodity. They were a good that you could own. You could pass down to your children, but you didn't have to. You could give it to somebody. You could trade it. You could use it as leverage, even. Which, I, which was very fascinating. Effectively, they were noble titles that weren't noble titles. Which these led to the 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 Verting in the spring and the Lied in the autumn, which were pretty much their local constituencies of they were local governments effectively of these thirty nine chieftains that they would have to hold every spring and every autumn at their own locations. But then we also had the farthings, which was the northern far farthing, eastern farthing, southern farthing, and, and a western farthing. Each of those four farthings were kind of just based off the location. They were just cardinal directions, and there were a certain amount of chief chiefs per area. Which, if there were a dispute in a certain farthing, they would have to either go to their chieftains to, dis to fix it, or they would have to go to the farthing court. If there wasn't able to, if someone from the east farthing fought someone from the western farthing or the north farthing, you'd have to go to the all thing court. It was this massive legal kerfuffle, effectively, of, well, my chieftain, I'm I'm sworn to this chieftain, you're sworn to this chieftain, but we, you're from the western farthing and I'm from the northern farthing. We need to pretty much go to the high court to settle our differences. It's that we've escalated the situation that far up. It's like, cool, awesome, we can do this. However, this led to, it, it gets a little bit confusing, 864 to about 8, 965 is also when Greenland was settled. Because someone got exiled from Iceland and settled Greenland, which led to, in turn, Leif Erikson find, discovering... Um, uh, Vinland eventually. He was actually born in Iceland, and then and then his father, I believe it was his grandfather settled settled Greenland. His father formalized Greenland. He ran Greenland for a while, and then that's where he died. Actually, then at one thousand, we have the Christianization, and uh, which was pretty much given by a law speaker said, "This is what we're we're appealing. Like this is what we have to do now." We also have the birth of the first appeals court. And then in 1106, we have the formalization of the Christian diocese. And then we have the Sterling generation from 1200, from about 1262, where the end of the campaign is, which all the chieftainships were owned by six families, which eventually went over to the Sterling, the Sterling family, who pretty much bent the knee to Norway and for power and resources and which the Old Covenant was signed, and Iceland effectively became nor part of Norway, in which turn was part of Denmark. This entire thing is a fucking mess. <laughs> that is the rough history of Iceland. Now, there's a shit ton of things I couldn't really go over, because it's like, well, this guy did this thing at this time to do this thing to do this. Th it's Roughly speaking, I broke it down into, four, into three eras. We have the Mystic Era, which is like who nobody really knows. It's completely shrouded in mystery. All we know is that it occurred, and this is roughly what happened. This is where we find, oh no, there are elves running around, we have to kill the elves. Or, oh no, a witch stole my son, 
we now need to go to the heart of the heart of Iceland to save him from the evil witch. That's where you have someone who's like I'm blatantly magical, and everyone's like, this makes complete sense. The Law Era is when, like, you could argue that the meat of the game, this is about 70 years, you could say, of the mystic side of things have kind of died down at this point. We're not fight. the elves aren't really there, it's Thongrim's kin are over there, you're over there. We're not Christianized yet. We are able to raid. We are able to, you know, fight among ourselves. And we're kind of encouraged to do this, you know. If I kill your slave, you're expected to, uh, yeah, I'm expected to pay you a certain amount. You know, was this, what's the value of this person? What's the value of this person? This is the game, game, weird era of, like, when you're actually kind of doing the feudalism thing. And you're competing over... Who's going to be chieftain of our area? Do we really follow him? Do we not follow him? Maybe we... Maybe we go with another guy. Or maybe you become the chieftain. And you have to kind of manage those people around you who all want something different. That's your family. That's your problem. Then we have Christian era. The Christian era is when things start going uh, more centralized. I think is the best way to word it. You have these kind of distinct shifts in how we're doing things. It becomes a lot less, we're just going to fight now, or blood feud time, and it becomes a lot more subdued in a way. But you also have things like the family starting to kind of consolidate power. You have people trying their best to maybe spread the faith, but maybe not spread the faith. You know, it's about trying your best to get the amount of stuff out of it. This is a time when you become Icelanders. You know, up here, you know, Mystic Era, you were Norwegian refugees, effectively. You were Norwegians who fucked off. They didn't want to deal with fair hair. The Law Era is when it was like, we're Norse, but we're not really, we're all individual kind of people. Here, the Christian era is when you become Icelandic. That's when you have, you've got 200 years of history in this these areas, and people are showing up. They want they want a part of it. They want they know, and it's also the time when, about 1066. I should also I should also put this about here. What we can do is we can put this right here. You can argue uh, there we go. Well, 1066 is when um Harald Hard uh, what the fuck, I cannot remember his name. Uh Sterling not Sterling Bridge. Uh yeah, Sterling Bridge, wasn't it? Pretty much the Viking Age ends about here. Which is a pretty big deal because if you built your entire economy, your entire world off raiding people, you can't raid anybody anymore because Christians don't enslave other Christians. But that won't stop other people from attacking you. We have a lot more people. We have a lot more swords. We have a lot more fighters. Generally speaking, you are throwing... By this point, Iceland has a lot of people on it with who are willing to fight for you. Who you're you can't work all this land by yourself. You need people to work it for you. And it's this kind of this bigger thing. You've settled down. You've stopped being raiders. You're now just people who live in a frozen hellscape. Have fun. But that is not going to say you can't have fun during those times. That's the entire point. You're supposed to kind of engage in these more uh, devious affairs. But yeah, this is the this is the rough timeline of Iceland, which is a little... It's weird to think about when you say, like, yes, this is the history of a country. Now, mind you, I'm not going into, like, here. Um, there are a few videos that go over 
uh, the history of Iceland. The Christian era, you can kind of say that the Christian era is very much the, like, all the shit that happened during these eras all come back to bite you in the, all come to back to bite you in the ass during these ones. You didn't get those chieftainships and you aren't really that powerful? Well, you're sucking somebody's dick right now. <laughs> Or, hey, you managed to get powerful. You managed to become one of those chieftains. You now have a very important part of your life that you now have to worry about. It becomes, it's a very different game as you kind of move through the eras. And I have a few ideas of, like, maybe to throw some more stuff here. Because this era right here is actually a lot more well-written and more written down. Simply because monks, honestly, monks... <laughs> the monks threw a lot of things at us and it was writing was one but so what we want to do is go to hello blood coin and steel my beloved my my nightmare that I cannot escape from <laughs> yeah for those who don't know blood coin and steel was one of my first games I actually ever wrote. It is originally the uh, get, uh, song of, a song of ice and fire role playing game, second edition that I wrote, uh, with all the expansions that we were supposed to get but never did. So if you want to play, it's all right here and graphic autistic detail, autistic detail. Uh, this game is massive, by the way. This is 111 pages of just rules and stuff. So what I need to do, thanks acknowledgement, you know, Sifka, let's see. We want to, what we're effectively going to do here is we need to formalize this. So we're going to do this, we're going to have a folder, and we need to call this a saga of blood, iron, soil. I might actually put that there, but generally speaking... Let's think, what needs to be cut? So, playing effort skills may increase. Human average is rank one. Yeah, I need to rewrite this a lot. Just generally speaking, I have to rewrite a lot. This is very early. This is very rough. Like, what? How, how old is, the, is this document? I'm curious now. How old is this document? July 27th, 2019, and I know this is not actually the earliest version either, because I, so it would be about, <laughs> or, uh, what if I wanted my clan to still be a bunch of raiders, still a way to reach the Muslims? I don't remember when they took Spain. To a degree. Like, I've been thinking about the raiding mechanic, and what I'm thinking about doing is, like, you can raid during certain things, and to reach certain locations, it's going to be more expensive or less expensive by just time-wise more than anything. We're sending out a few raiders to keep the... You know, we're sending my... I'm sending my son out to do this. It might be you know, a year before he comes back, but he, we went all the way down to North Africa or something like that. I have a few ideas. I need to actually research more into that era, but they don't really talk about much, which is kind of one of the issues. It gets really messy during that time because they talk more about Scandinavian history than Icelandic in particular. And then very quickly, they're like, we got conquered by the uh, the, the, the Norwegians. And then 18, in the 1800s, it's like, oh, oh, no. <laughs> uh, let's see. What's in your file? Let Charles Moore tell. So what we need to do is what we're going to do is we're going to call this. We're going to call this the rough, the rough and ready document. We're gonna, yeah, we're literally just going to call this the rough and ready. This is going to have no formatting, no anything. This is just going to be me taking bits and pieces from locations in this book to just say, I need this, I need this. 
because do I even have to play? I don't even have that. I don't even have like a how to play section in this game for some fucking reason. I don't know why. It's in character creation, and then what? Oh yeah. <laughs> To actually play the game, you have to learn about character creation first, and then you get the skill checks. This is how to play the game. Notepad, what were you doing? Notepad, what are what are your what? Why are you the way that you are, Notepad? Uh, past Notepad was not a very smart duck. So, see, so most of the char most characters are going to die around here. But this seems about right. We can probably... I, pff, we need a new term for destiny. There's actually a very specific term for destiny. <laughs> which, it's weird because Iceland does actually have a, have a point in history in which they were raided by Barbary pirates. Yes, the Barbary pirates came up to, came up to Iceland and raided them and took slaves. And it was like... And even I was like, like, that sounds ridiculous. I checked. Yes, it, it did occur. Just because they had no way to defend themselves. Uh, let's see. So most characters are going to be about a young adult. So yeah, these are what's... Benefits, drawbacks. Okay. Uh, character creation is exactly the way I would want it. Skill checks, destiny... We do this. Again, this is not not really formally writing anything down here. I'm just putting what needs to be put down here. That's actually a Beowulf. So, actually, what's the Norse destiny word? Vid. Yeah, because it would... Because you have the, it's consulting the Norns. The Norns were the ones who pretty much gave you your fucking destiny. So was it just called destiny? Was there the Jotun Jotunheim? I guess Ved, the name Erda Ildingu. I guess Ved would be the correct term. Would be would be this. Like it, if technically speaking, it would be. As it would just be your destiny. That's what it would be. It wouldn't be destiny per se. It would literally just be your Ved. Your destiny is that. Okay. Vid. Uh, let's see. D6 to a skill check. Because skill checks are just going to be 2D6. Because I need to make this simple. Because you're going to be... You're going to go through characters. You're going to go through a few characters. Just because of the nature of the game. It's generational. I want you to retire a character which does remind me um like i'm gonna need to just remind myself like a character retirement pretty much i need i need a system to say you want to be retired like after a character, you've kind of finished with a character, I want you to be able to retire them, and just, their story has kind of come to an end. It, they might not be dead, but their story has kind of run its course. Yeah, and then we move on to, like, their son, or their another person. Of course, you can also end a character's life by just having them die, because, you know, dying sucks. Mm. Let me see. So, characters are not immortal.
So health and well-being. This should be fine. I might put in different... I honestly might put in slightly different willpower and composure. Because the idea is, since this is taking influence from A Song of Ice and Fire, there was the... It, it was the... um. Intrigue mechanic. The intrigue mechanic was actually fairly interesting. It might actually not be a terrible idea. I'm just gonna put that in there. Because like one of the, one of the major advantages is that there is you you do have like a bigger grander character than anything you have the you, the family you have your family's history and your family's story so what I was thinking like if you retire a character early you just get a boatload of stuff inside like they just contribute kind of like a yearly ticking honor or hoard or whatever. Just for the fact of they've retired, this person did their job, look at all the cool stuff they've done, and they're kind of giving you something in exchange for not really having the autonomy over them. You know, let's see, wounds and willpower. Furious wounds are bent to arguments, are more serious. Each point I lots of notes to. Yeah. This entire set. See, what I need to do, so. As I'm going to have to start rewriting some bits and pieces. And I did kind of decide that we are going to go for a... We're going to go for a semi-strict economy. And how this works is going to be... Right, I'm hopefully, it's going to be relatively simple to understand. Which is... Let's say, for example, uh, we've produced... Let's just say we've produced 10, you know, 10 goods. Just, we've produced 10 of a thing. Now, with those 10 goods, we can either get 10 hoard, just money. We're just going to sell it for money. Actually, we'll just, actually, we can do one good, one good equal one hoard. Or we can sell it for two honor. Or we can get 20 honor out of it, or any kind of variation of it. With the idea being that it's us just selling it raw. We're selling it on the open market. We are giving, they're giving us something in return, and it's just niceties. That's what your hoard is going to be. Because the economy in fucking pre Christian Scandinavia isn't really talked about. Because who the fuck cares about the economy? It just works. And it was kind of like, it's. From what I could gather, the Horde system was very much derived from stuff you have and your ability to kind of negotiate more than anything and be like, well, here's some fanciful gifts and shit. Horde is kind of a, almost a closed economy in, in a way. Like, everyone kind of has Horde and you're kind of moving it around. It's your way of buying things by virtue of just trade power or by just having some stuff other people want. Oh, 4E does that? Huh. See, I, I love... See, here's the thing. I adore Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 2nd Edition. I love it. One of my favorite games of all time. I have not read 4th Edition. I need to read 4th edition. I have the book. It's right there. And I've always wanted to go over it. I just never... I don't know. Maybe it's just my nostalgia goggles. <laughs> Maybe it's my nostalgia goggles. But yeah. I've heard good things about Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 4th edition, though. I've heard a lot of good things. But as... Kind of the idea is honor is you giving this shit away or it's you selling it kind of under. You're not really making any money or anything off of it. It's, well, of course, friend, here's this. Or like, you're a good tradesman or you're a good person. It's pretty much you giving goods away, not for actual, like, money to be used, but for more of, like, good boy points. 
that's you having the kind of like this circular trade with your neighbors being like, well, I have a bunch of wool because I have a bunch of sheep. You have a bunch of chickens somehow or milk because you have a lot of cows. Why don't I trade you some of our wool for some of your milk? And it's we're, we're building relations. People know I'm the guy with the sheep. People know you're the guy with the milk. And we all kind of come out on top. So it's kind of the... You can use Horde for a lot more stuff than you can for Honor. Honor is pretty much used for claiming territory and being pissed off at each other. It's about making these kind of grandiose displays. And some things aren't just going to be worth much honor, but a lot of hoard, but some things are going to be worth a lot more honor than actual wealth. So that's why I'd say it's kind of a semi-strict economy, because, like, the one thing I was worried about is I didn't want to be, like, to, you know, like, to produce... to produce one good equal one X, you know, one X plus one Y. I didn't want to do that because then it'll just be micromanaging and that's going to drive people in fucking sane. So it's kind of the, the implication is you might have a good year where your one good is worth one horde. Might be a really bad year where you aren't going to make any money off of it. But you might be able to get a little honor off of it, just a smidge. Like you're always going to get honor, but you're not always going to get money. Or you're going to get a shit ton of money, but, like, no honor. Very low honor. So. It's. I saw the art. I'm, I'm mixed on it. It's fine to me, though. But, like, again, that's one of those nostalgia goggles things. It's like, I love the, you know, kind of the drawn look of uh, Warhammer Fantasy 2nd Edition. Ugh, I love it so much. Uh, let's see it. <laughs> and that's... See, here's the thing. Here's what I've told people when it comes down to it. Is... A lot of those art pieces, when people are like, boo-hoo, they have a black person or something on the cover. Remember that this is, that is not a, like, a conscious decision half the time. That is a, we have a boardroom. There is a boardroom meeting that says, we need to do X, Y, and Z. You are going, we have to put this in here. Because if we don't, we're going to get crucified. So I don't really... I try to just throw my hands up and say, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to think about it. I'm not going to even debate it because that is, that's just the nature of the beast these days. You got to do that to have to do that. That's why I usually like in some of my games, I try to at least throw at least one woman in there just before the fact of like, Hear some diversity because that's just kind of how things go. It's not, I'm not going to blame them. I just care about your rules, but uh, abstract stat to roll against rather than a tangible resource. That's kind of the, that's kind of the hard part when it comes to like the honor economy, because <sighs> how do I want to word this? It's not necessarily like a single person. It's kind of your, it's the family perspective, and I want it to be, you like, you have this resource to really kind of think about without it being abstract or too random, but also not, like, this is one of those moments where you look at it, you're like, there's no good fucking option for this, and most of the other games, <laughs> that's it right, women should be treated as property. <laughs> Blood Feud does have some interesting opinions on women. Um, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna humor them very much, even though that video is still hilarious. <laughs> the fucking puppets, <laughs> the Viking puppets from Chechia. Those are the ter terrifying fucking things I've ever saw. To a degree, because like one of the ideas is if you be the apex male, if you become the giga male is and you retire that character they're going to be worth a lot more which again because you got to remember there's concubinage like concubinage is like a, a distinct thing in this in this world this setting these people 
being able to like sail to fucking Ireland, kick down someone's door, see beautiful peasant woman number 43 being like, hot diggity damn, my wife is going to fucking hate me. <laughs> Throw her on your boat. Cool. I've got two wives now. <laughs> they hate me, but who cares? Pretty much like. What I want to do is men are very much able to generate a shit ton more honor than women. However, the, the main catch is women can influence those men very heavily. And I actually have a very, um, I wonder if I have the note on women in this one. I do have a note where it comes to... Ah, the history book right here. Oh, do I not have the women? Do I not have the women section? I don't believe I do. I feel silly. But there are. Ah, uh, then we have like bastards and where are. Hmm. It's somewhere in here, I swear. But I pretty much had a note in this particular game, at least the previous version, which was. You might see it's really hard for women to gain, you know, prestige and add to the family. The idea is women aren't necessarily supposed to. They're supposed to organize things and then give it to someone who might need it. Well, of course my my son is the greatest warrior of the land. He is a flawless warrior and has slain a hundred men and he's this great and wonderful person. I my son is the best and this kid could be a fucking loser can't swing a sword hardly he is just useless but you've organized so many goddamn fights that he's been a part of and the guy you're he's fighting against uh you have him by the balls effectively because you have information that he's been fucking that Irish slave girl who belongs to his boss and his boss's kid from his new concubine isn't his. You know that. And he's going he's gonna to job, effectively, to your son to make himself look better. That's the idea behind playing a woman, almost, in, these, in this kind of game, is... While you may not be glorious and lovely and have all the prestige of the world, you're behind the scenes organizing things. You're making sure your husband is being being actually intelligent. You're the one making sure your son is going after the right girl and not going after that girl over there who is from a poor family. You don't need her. Go look at the go go, go look at this family's daughter. She's great. She has a lot of money. And she also can, and she'll also bear us a lot of grandkids. It's a very different kind of play with being a, <laughs> which I, that's one of the things that I'm going to have to like, I keep going back and forth, which like, because there's always like a, how do I want to word this? Having a beautiful wife in this era literally means that you are going like, as a man, if you have a beautiful wife, you are obviously better off. My beautiful wife over here makes me a better man because I, I, I am better than you. Having shit like, yeah, my wife is a super woman and able to do all these awesome things. And she's also smoking hot. Cool. But maybe, because that's like one of the things when it comes to these generational games. I want you to always have problems. It's like, okay, my son can marry one of three girls. This girl's a troglodyte. She is the ugliest. She is the stupidest. She is the most useless creature ever to exist. Her, fam her father, though, is my boss, and he is the greatest man currently on the island and loves her. And he's going to pretty much give me everything I want if I give my son to him. That's option one. Option two, he can marry his childhood sweetheart, who is uh, also part of that poor family over there that you've had about a century-long blood feud with. The fact that they met is a problem. 
The fact that you're even considering this is a problem. Why haven't you killed her yet? Option three, the reliable girl across the way. She's a Norwegian, she's Norwegian royalty. She does not speak your language. She is not very smart, but she definitely will produce children. So it's like, what do you, what's the, what's the thinking there? And that's an adventure unto yourself, because what if one of the player is actually playing the sun? What do you want? Maybe you can actually make an entire adventure. Yeah, why, why can't you make an entire adventure about pretty much being the son and his friends saying, screw it. If I can't have her technically, I'm going to kidnap her. We're going to go to their farm in the middle of the night. I sent her a letter and we're, we're going to kidnap her and we're going to rush back home. We just have to in and out. It'll, it'll be real easy. After three, after two of your friends end up bodies and you have a fucking arrow through your leg, you, she's fine. Everything's fine, but you sparked you sparked a war. Or maybe you're playing the father and the mother, and you're like, "My son's a fucking idiot. Why won't he marry the right girl?" <laughs> no, that can you be my Viking mommy? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's these games really do demand a very certain kind of character very certain kind of thought process but let's see where are you? so this is not that isn't flawless and that's so then we have our benefits and drawbacks so this is this is going to be my favorite part because i get to curate all of this because this is a massive undertaking here because I implemented across almost every single one of the expansions, every single one of the games, pretty much, of benefits and drawbacks and problems that you have. So, let's see. Uh, so, okay, we okay, this is fine. Like, we have... So, let's see. We have our benefits... Out to a suit of armor, penalty, over their shield, stand behind me, blocks all damage, and does not consume a phase, throws themselves into a rage while fighting. Berserk. Uh, Muna to cut exotic fighting style, horse warrior. Let's see, actually, Viking Horseman. We're Viking Horseman. <laughs> okay, they weren't really war horses, though. They were more like traveling horses. Viking War Horse? I... <laughs> Yeah, these weren't, they weren't riding horses. That's the idea. The Well, they were riding horses, but not really, like, fighting. Uh, hacking down them with an axe. Hardy, five wounds, plus one blood. Long arms. Uh, yes, this is the, this is the game where being a eunuch does have its disadvantages and advantages. Because, th again, this was born from a... Uh, you know, a, um, a Song of Ice and Fire, and it was it was necessary that somebody be able to play Varys. It was necessary. Someone wants to play the big, fat, bald man who is actually a merman. So, let's see. Uh, bows name will take... Vikings did use bows. Beast of a man. One-man army. He's a blade smasher. With a dozen men. Yeah, most of these work pretty well for physical physical wise. Uh let's see. Attractive, clenched teeth. Court darling. Uh you need to be changed. Favorite of nobles, you need to be changed. 
favor to the small folk. You need to be changed. Very much so. Uh, Emily knows to me considered to be in love. You're fine. Head of the family. That should work, though. With words, that's fine. I'm with him. That should work. Keep friends close. Uh, plus we argument on characters who are affectionate or friendly. Open palm, clinch fifth. They are a part of. Plotter. Seductive. That works. Strong-willed, worldly. So, that needs to be changed. We can probably also add in a... a honor of Titan. <laughs> like, pretty much with that one is, like, I would need to give them almost a completely separate one, which is just, like, you're a guy who knows how to actually use horses at all. Like, you're the guy who raises horses. Uh, personally, all for one, assisting in action, animal companion. That should work. Uh, you are not, there are no knights here. That's one thing you gotta remember. There are no knights. Uh, <laughs> technically, yes. A blade is a bastion of reality. <laughs> Negative two while they are present. Uh, Anti-reality bending is somewhat weaponized. Does not affect allies. Uh, destiny may spend a bit, uh, destiny point to immediately cause a magic spell to fail, but not backfire. This one is going to get some minor changes by virtue of being... Because magic is going to be really weird, because it's not really going to be like, I cast magic missile. It's going to be a lot more ritualistic, a lot more like, we're seeing things beyond the veil. I want this one to be like, you are just the guy who can use, like, you're, you've defied the vid. You don't care about destiny. You never have cared about destiny. You make your own. That's kind of how I want to do that. Uh, the burger, uh, you need significant changes. Padre, that's fine. Blank... They aren't called blanks, but there are people in Game of Thrones who are like, by their very presence, kind of fucks with magic. It's literally like a one-off line in the fucking book, in like a fucking comic book. Be like, oh no, him being here has disrupted the magic. It's stupid. Game of Thrones is stupid. <laughs> so, let's see. Yes, childbearing hips was a technical option. And this is actually very important for the mother's health rule, because if you have a poor health rule, you have a good chance of just dying. Uh, divination has visions of the future, influence future actions. Elder, high respected individual. You are going to need some slight changing. Gladiator, you weren't... Um, yeah, no. Sorry, Gladiator. Kennel Master. Uh, take care of the kennels of the house. Uh, multilingual. One for all. No fantastic assistance. Why do we have one for all? Oh, I have all for one and one for all. A uh, power couple or power couple self congratulatory. Uh, yeah. Servant lover squire. Okay, we don't need you. You are not a going. There's no squire. Sworn sword fine. Tourney knight. There's no knights in this setting. A unique weapon, virile, yes. Uh, skills, brawler, that's fine. Active, famous. Ah, uh, we can use that. Healer, healer skills. Noah man. Uh, leader, uh, magician. 
Magician's going to change because you're not going to be a magician magician. You're going to be... There is a very particular thing when it comes to Viking, like, I have magic. I had to go too deep into Game of Thrones. Too deep. Reformer, pious, faith skill. Uh, again, you're going to need to get changed because we need to separate Christian from non-Christian. You also have little... <laughs> Robin Hood and Little John looking for the woods. So yeah, Sailor of the Sea. This might... I'm going to put a note for myself here is make this default. Because I'm debating on saying all men can get this skill. All women will have this skill. Kind of with the uh, with the basic assumption that like men and women are expected to do different things. A man is supposed to fight in, Vi in Norse society. A woman isn't. Not to say a woman can't learn how to fight. It's just going to be a little... It's a little bit different. But if your farm is five people... You know, if you live on a farm kind of in the middle of nowhere and, like, wolves show up every now and again... Or, like, you're not... You, you're kind of in a feud... You want your daughter to at least be able to know how to defend herself. Uh, survivalist... Yeah, like, a few of these, I'm not too sure. Childhood disease, that's fine. Crippled. Mm. We're cutting Summer Child, because Summer Child does not work in this setting, actually. Vitki, yeah, that's like there's a few terms that could work, like, like technically, like this would be one of the more accurate terms, but technically, even like Godi, like Godi is supposed to be like a you're a mystical person. Oh no, like that also has its own thing. It's like ah, uh, uh, let's see, alcoholic, actually. Let's do physical drawbacks, impaired sense. I'm going to cut Risen. So, boring personality. Uh, breach of conduct. Demon eye. Reputation is smeared into oblivion. Dull. It's not all that wise. Easily convinced. Uh, yeah, eunuch. Yeah, that is the one advantage of being a eunuch. You cannot be seduced. You have no penis, but... Uh, let's see. It's easy to anger and has. Plus that. Servant to love. Terrible scars, threatening, unmoving. An alcoholic, barren, bastard born. Craven. Criminal is a pretty big one. Demanding lover, dependent. We don't need you. We obviously don't need by gutter knight. Potent layabout. Tainted soul. Wanted. And then ward. Okay. Um, I don't know about ward. I just realized I was doing this into the, the actual document. Not the... <laughs> yeah, welcome to my life. Uh, where was it? Uh, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. Everything is fine. Disgrace, human habit. We don't need you. We don't need you. That should be fine. All right. 
I'm like, wait a second. I don't remember putting this in. I'm like, wait a goddamn. Wait, wait a fucking second. Wait a moment. That's not right. Uh, Ward. I don't know about Ward. I need to look into that a little bit more and see if that was a thing. Uh, stagnant, dying in your bed. Okay, so this should all be good if I just put all of these in raw. So... Guess alcoholic is a good term for magician too. If you want to be an alcoholic wizard and being like, "Don't worry, guys, let me perform some magic for the family," as you fall over on your face, divination. I'm like, yeah, no, go for it. Like, I leave it really up to how you want to do things, and um, how you want to build your character in this particular system, just because it's so diverse. You know, just because you ain't got no penis doesn't mean you can't still love. That's a big thing is you can't be seduced as easily. Like a, a, a woman can't just you know go up to you and be like, I'm seducing you now. You can't do that. However, that doesn't mean you can't fall in love. And maybe that's an entire problem unto itself. Hey, you love this person. They, they, you love this person, but you can't really, you know... You're not really consummating anything if you, uh, if you catch my drift. Okay, so, so yeah, no, it's yeah. Old character every year, each year must make a target number ten endurance check. If they fail, they may burn destiny to avoid dying. Yeah, I remember I made combat really fucking weird in this game. I'm gonna have to just... Everything should be pretty one-to-one -one there. Because we got the war system in place. Okay. So, roughly speaking... We use the raiding, because the raiding economy is going to be the best idea, because if you raid and you actually go a viking, you have the advantage of get both, you get both horde and you get honor. You get both by doing it. So... Both of these feed into this... Uh, it's a smaller acres. It wouldn't be an acre. What would you be? Because it wouldn't be an acre. Because, fun fact, the Norse didn't have... They didn't write this shit down. Because they're like, we don't need this. This is fine. Um... Uh, let's see. Four yard lens. So let's see, 30 acres, two, okay, that's two of the Daneland's ox gangs. So what's an ox gang? I have 20 English acres, based in fertility led cultivation, so it can be low as 15. Okay, so again, it was based off the Dane, it became the Dane law. Elsewhere, so we can assume now, this is roughly akin to it. Uh, God. To Grotlitz. Okay, so. Okay, you want pure autism. You want pure, beautiful autism. Because the thing is. We need to div divvy up the land. That's the big thing. Is you need to divvy up the land so people can claim the land. So people understand, like, I want this, I want that. That's how it works. 
How do you how do you divvy it up? I originally thought like an acre would be fine. If you need like two and a half acres to feed two fucking horses, acres are not going to be enough. We need something like above an acre but below a huge amount. It's like uh, uh, ah. so. Why are you all like this? Old land measurement in Scotland, England, 16th century. So it'd be about 30 acres. Equivalent to two of the Dane Laws ox gangs. So if we use an ox... Okay, so it would be a... Originally, I thought, like, okay, maybe we'll do, like, the hide. The hide is a hundred, about 120 acres, roughly. So, but, I'm like, that's too much acres. Like, you're gonna, uh, let's see. Yeah, eight vergrits to a hide. Sorry, Huber. You know, the land of, uh, wait, German word, Hub. Uh, you know, the land which farmer might own. So, you want to do, like, Norse land rights. Is that a thing? Uda law. Ah, of course. The Uda law. Of course. <sighs> no. Ancient Norwegian property laws. Okay, so this is two Norwegian property laws. So into that the enactment of its lost government Norwegian property. They are the assessment, the homestead right, and the... Two rights are important that they include the Constitution of Norway. They have real property, the Udal Law, the Odel. I fucking hate everything. I hate, I hate farming. Uh, Jesus Christ, how horrifying. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to, <laughs> to pre, pre written land rights with no pad hat on. Because okay, so okay, so let's let's do this right. So a hide is sufficient land to support households. Traditionally, taken to be 120 acres. So 120 acres equals equals one hide. And however, a hide is equal to Middle of the product plow to eight oxen coal. So wait, so twenty English acres. So a hundred twenty acres equals one hide. However, this would technically be twenty, so it would be uh six. So it'd be six ox gangs. So apparently this was enough to feed a family. Ah, uh, jeez. How was past maybe pastor pasture land? Because that's how everything would have to be measured. It'd be pasture land. So it would be um, Norse pasture pasture land. What do we what do we got here? How are we how are we broken down? It's the excellent location to a modern building covers the tiles. Yeah, pretty much. You understand my pain now. Because this is going to be, mean literally nothing to anybody. I could call them spaces and no one would care. However, I care because I want to get this as accurate as possible. So, give me one second. I got something in my eye.
And the fall, like so how big were how big were the pasture lands? That's all I want to know. Uh as lives on small farms, they sell wildly from one region to the other. Clusters small farms tend to be clustered into small village or hamlets. Most flash smart or well separated in Iceland. Nothing like villages existed. Typical farm settlements form cultivation or grazing. The homestead consisted of a long house and multiple outbuildings. Let's see. Ah, uh, high location. So the visitors not be friendly in the Viking Age farm to the left. Signal fires. Uh, this farmhouse in North Iceland near a river was too exposed, so he moved his farm up the valley and made farming cattle raised for many purposes. Had stalls for 18 heads of cattle. I don't mind grazed outdoor. Sheep. We love sheep. Let's see. Higher pastures. <sighs> That's a good. How big? Give me acre. Maybe like okay. Um, used to be a large farm required twenty to hectare, so about fifty to two hundred acres to be set aside for hay cultivation to keep their livestock alive during the winter. So roughly speaking, if we use this as our basic, so it looks like you need. Well, if we do one ox gang equals 20 acres. If we split things up into... Do we have something above it? Well, it's typically around 15 acres, so... English unit plan for tax assessments equal to 30 acres. It was close to two of the Dane Law's ox gangs. Two Dane Law ox gangs equal this, or Bovater's parallel division of. So, let's see. If we break it down to here, because if this is supposed to be one Vergate equals about 40 acres. If we break it, okay, we break it down into ox gangs. That's how you expand your territory. It's you ex grabbing more territory per area. So if we make each square roughly 20 acres and we want an individual section being, say, let's say, for example, we want a location to be 10 by 10 would be 100 squares. So that would be... Yeah. 100 squares, so 100 ox gangs would be 2,000 acres. 2,000 by 2,000 acres is roughly about that. So let's say about 10 by 5, like, what would 2,000, like, what 2,000, so 2,000 acres, what would that even look like? That would be 2,000 acres. How much are 10 acres in football? <laughs> How much are 10 acres in football fields? <laughs> Jeez. 
<laughs> yeah, it, it means nothing. Here's the thing, like, it, this literally means nothing. However, it means something to me because, like, one of the main things I hate about... One of the big things that I absolutely despised, loathed, hated, just, like, about, like, Blood Feud, for example. Blood Feud had literally nothing to do with this particular era. They just wanted to talk about things so they could slap on a particular word. There was no... There was nothing there. However, you also have things such as um, Saga of the Icelanders, which kind of did the same thing, which it doesn't really matter. You just do it. It just works. So I wanted to specifically make this as detailed as possible. 10 acres is 7.57 football fields. <laughs> so if we do this particular thing... So... We split it up into about 2,000 acres, do a 10 by 10. So this would be... I'm trying to get like a... You know, I, I want it to be like, it's gonna take you like a few hours to walk to like another person's farm. So, I mean, uh, yep, we're getting real jank right now. We're getting real jank. So, okay. Okay, bear with me here. So, if we treat this, we're going to resize this. We're not going to resize it. We're going to do canvas size. We're going to do, let's say, 1920 by 1080. We'll, we'll, just, we'll just do 1920 by 1080 just to get a good idea. We need to do this. We need to go to effects, render, grid, or checkerboard. Uh, that's to maybe like 150. Would that work? Come on. Uh, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight. Yeah, we can work with this. And there'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven by So roughly speaking, this is one so this is seven. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So this is 7 by 13. And if we're doing these ox gangs wise, so 7 by 13 would be... I'm trying to actually get like a good... like If we're doing this by ox gangs, 7 would be 140 acres by... Um... It would be 13 times 20. So 260 acres. If we do it the idea that your neighbors are going to be like, how long do you think it could take to walk in a like walking an acre? Let's just do walking in like walking an acre, like 16% of a mile. Three miles an hour. So you can cover a mile in 20 minutes. So if we if we do this, if you can walk 16%, if so if an acre is 16% of a mile, three miles an hour. So it would be 20 times, 16%, so 16 times 20 would be th uh, I'm trying to see like so it takes three hours to, tr to cross a full ox gang would that be it no that didn't sound right I'll actually well it takes an hour to cross a full ox gang so it's so like if I'm here and my neighbor's here. It's going to take me one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's going to take me about eight hours to to walk over to him. So I mean, I guess that kind of works. 
We do about an hour to travel in Ox Game. Ugh. Hey, if you've got the math right, I mean, I'm looking at this, I'm like, Jesus, fuck. Like... So, yeah, so, okay, it's 0.4 miles on it, like, 0 0.04 miles. So, 0 0.04 miles times 20, because, again, a Nox game is 20 acres, would be 80? No, it would be 8. More. Am I a fucking... Can I do math, please? No, it would be 0.8. It would be 0.8 of a mile. So, 0.8 of a mile is equals one ox gang just going up and down so just raw going side to side and takes you about um oh that didn't sound good Four, then it'd be twenty. Well, no, it'd be twenty times point zero four because an ox gain is twenty acres. It wouldn't be point one seven miles because it's twenty acres. If you tw actually, ah! yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like, I'm thinking in like squared space not what i should be thinking which isn't correct so if you would only if it's 20 acres uh it would be five by fucking four four by five so you'd have to the unless you do like 4.5 so technically it would be like 4.5 times point zero yeah Uh, like why aren't you working why aren't you working out in my mind because this is what I mean by like you need we need fucking Pythagoras for this one. So, okay, let, let's 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 take a step back. Let's take a step back. Let's take a step back. This is the establishment of territory. This is the establishment of me, what I own, and what you own. Ox gang doesn't quite work, but maybe we go. F uh, I mean, we guess we can use the ox gang, but it would just be. It would just be really small, like a really small territory. But is that a problem? Like, like is there a term? Like, is there, there's gotta be something to work with. Because if it's a hide, is 120 feet. If we go, do we go under hides? Because that's 120 acres, and which was defeat a family. But if you do this, it would be. <sighs> we do 30 of these, so this would be. Yeah, it'd be 0.43 miles a side. But arguably, it'd be too large. Because the hide's pretty fucking big. It's 120 fucking acres. So maybe... So maybe, let me...
So you need about 50 to 200 acres, 50 to 200 acres to like actively do a large farm. I wish we could have a, I wish there was a fucking map that you could consult, like how far away were they? But Walk across a hide in less than 10 minutes. Yeah, but a hide again, a hide is 120 acres. Roughly speaking, we assume that this is let's say, let's just say, for example, we're gonna we're gonna draw we're gonna draw something on our little map here. Here's our little map. Let's say, for example, we got a river flowing through here. This is a river. This is a problem, child. We have the little river here, and the little river makes it so our life gets a lot more complicated. Big river. We, we will be the dark red family, decide we want to settle here. This is our little home. We are the dark red family. Here's our longhouse. This is what we call home. And what we can say is like this is the bare minimum of what we want, of what would actually be able to sustain us. So if we treat it with the idea that this is an ox gang, not an ox gang, maybe we do it as a, if we base it off a hide, God, this makes things look way bigger than they should be. Because the thing is, if we base it off a hide, let's say like this is just an individual hide going from here to here would be almost over 200. Like, this is a large farm already. There's no reason to expand on food. Because we want expansion. We want to encourage people to expand, and we want to encourage people to get into fights over territory and over land. Because you have very low land, unless we do... Unless. And actually, if we go under... 30 acres to the big red, it's similar measure you know knows the... So 15 acres, carpet with 120 acres. So actually, if we use, we use a bigger it, but we use it for 40 acres. You can cover five squares per hour. Unless. Unless we like massively cut down on the scale. So if you could cover five squares an hour, that'd be one, two, three, four, five. And so yeah, that would be it's a good that's a good amount of distance. So I guess we can If we do forty. 40 acres of land to get 200 acres of just raw land. You need one, two, three, four, five. Unless we do like, uh, unless we literally invent a new unit of measurement. 
maybe like something for like 50, for example. If we could do, if we could make each of these 50 acres, we could do something like one, two, three, four. This would be a big farm right here. But however, let's say, let's just say we expand our farm and it looks something like this. This is where our, our land is right here. Like, that's a big farm with 50 though. Fuck! Fucking hell. Unless we... <laughs> Unless we do something very radical. Uh, which... Unless we... Unless we make something like this size. Make each of these two hunt about so make these each acres, but then the expansion of which is pretty easy. So if we do this. Then we're not going to run into conflict with each other, but we want a conflict. Unless we have, like... Hmm. Each square is 200 acres, so... 200 acres equals 5 hours of travel. By foot, roughly. So, divide that down, that would be about 40 acres... 40 acres an hour, if I'm doing my rough, doing my math right. We do 40 acres an hour. Like, yeah. Actually, no, it would be 40 acres an hour. What am I talking about? No, 200 acres... Five square, no, 200 acres, five squares an hour. So 200 acres would be one hour of travel by foot. I know, that would be... Fuck, what am I thinking? Ah, I'm doing the math wrong in my head, fuck. Um, 200 acres. So 200 acres, roughly, equals five squares of travel. Equal one hour. Okay, we're just... We have to break this down. So... Roughly speaking, we're looking at about one square of travel. The so one square of travel every about 15 minutes. 15, 20 minutes. Mm. Yeah, I, I know. I'm, I'm just looking at like faces and numbers and my brain is fucking melting right now because I knew this was going to be the hard part I knew this was going to happen <laughs> unless we do something because the thing is if we do 200 so if we assume 200 acres equal one square equal one square not 2,000 acres that's very different 200 acre equal one square equal one square every about again, so it equals about twelve. So about twelve minutes of travel. So yeah, a, a brisk walk. We're actually hauling ass kind of thing. What can we actually? Let's do. Let's let's consult Google. Google, I have a question. How far? How far were Icelandic farms from each other? Uh, no, no, continue without disabling. I just, 
Learn a strategy for food for one's family, wealth, social standing, uh, and husbandry. Okay. Fewer three, two or three building, main building, house dwelling without stable. Five, six, seven buildings were significantly larger than smaller farms. Hmm. If we really want to. We could make it. You need 200, you need 200 acres effectively to feed a large family. Let's just do, we'll, we'll just use that as like a basis. We'll use that kind of as like a basic concept. About two kilometers apart. Because the thing is, these weren't necessarily. The thing is, these aren't necessarily villages either. These are literally independent little farms that you'd have people around. So it would be like if we say two hundred acres feeds feeds a large farm. Well, actually, if we think about it like this, two hundred acres feeds a large farm. About a hundred acres should feed a farm half the size. Two kilometers would be about two squares. Okay. If we do the 200 acres solution. So if we cut the acreage in half. We assume that from point A to point B. Like this distance right here is about a hundred acres. It's a hundred acres of land. We probably I'll shrink the map probably a little bit, but we just want to get a good idea of it. And then that would make a village, individual villages, probably about it'd be instead of being two, it would be about you know, this would roughly be about two-ish kilometers, roughly speaking. So, individual farms would probably, you know, start uh, we don't want to do that, we want to make, we'll, we'll, we'll do that. Individual farms would probably start around here. This is a hundred acres of land by virtue of I've built my house and I'd like, these are the bare minimum I need to like feed my family and my initial group of people. Like this is a, this is an independent small one. Someone else's farm, for example, though, may be, you know, over here, maybe two kilometers, two kilometers out. It doesn't take long to get them. However, We've officially kind of come into like close proximity to each other. Someone might also be, let's say, one, two, three, four, five, six. Like, someone may also be pretty far away. He's over here. You know, like, automatically, if we do that, yeah, eight squares an hour. So, yeah, it would be about eight squares an hour. And this would also make horses a little bit more interesting because if you get a horse you can quickly cover distance that would also make these little conflicts a little bit more intense because suddenly what occurs is let's say for example we're we're, we're going to be the uh the, the we're going to be the gray family here we're going to be this is our home 
This is our initial territory. And we want to space out a little bit more. We just want more pasture land to really be our pasture land. So we might do something like this. However, the red family, they want to do this as well. So suddenly we kind of share a border that we don't really like each other with. Like we can feed all our animals, but it's also we want to expand things out to make our own stuff. We want to make money now. We want to expand our, our people out a little bit more. Unless we also do see what we can do now this is this is a gamer moment we can make the idea behind of separating things like like pasture land versus like crops because obviously you can have certain land so you might need certain pastures for like here are our horses here are our you know, here's the crops and maybe we can make that the exchange like you need one crop for one pasture, but maybe like the home pasture produces one of each, so it kind of sustains itself. That could work, maybe. It's Iceland rough terrain, yeah, pretty much. Twelve scares and twelve scares now. That's still fine. That's that's still a decent amount of time. You can still you still want to beat the shit out of someone so even traveling up here would be about one two three four five six seven so that'd be about half an hour but it's also shitty rough terrain in which again one of the things is you could assume that the map might look like just assume these are like rugged awful terrain or whatever i don't fucking know like there and then there's like a big river in the middle here that we all use so, okay, so we're using, there's territory and there's woods and stuff that we have to expand this way. All right, so 100 acres seems like a lot, though. But not really. Like, here's the thing. Okay. Think about it. Think about it like this. 100 acres of land is what you need to feed somebody. That's 100 acres is going to feed your horses. It's going to, and you can feed, like, and that's by virtue of having it, you can eat it. Okay? Simple enough to understand. However, we want to expand in this direction for 100 acres worth of land that we've claimed as wood deposits. We want to claim the river for fishing. We want to claim this section for this. We want to claim this section for this. We want to expand 100 acres in various directions of just saying these are our territory. Not necessarily like not necessarily that we're using it, it's just what we have. It's what we own technically. So that could work. And if everyone's spaced out about two kilometers. So we can actually space people out even a little bit more. We can probably do about three kilometers. If it's two kilometers per per four, for example. So that would be two squares equal one kilometer. So we could do like six kilometers would be about a, would still be under an hour. It wouldn't be that difficult to actually get to somebody. The problem being is you may not be hitting three miles an hour. You might be hitting one because it's the middle of fucking winter. You might be hitting, again, it's going to be rougher terrain. Going through the woods is going to take more time. So... Okay, so we can kind of use a little bit of dramatic time in that regard. So it's kind of like the, you will arrive at a place when you need to arrive at the place in some aspects, just because it's not very good. But we know it's going to take us about, it's going to take us about an hour to, to huff it over to Vingar's place. But we also know it's going to take us about two hours to huff it over to, you know, Dent and Half Dan's place. Okay, okay. We could do this. Because each of these initial villages are going, each of these initial farmers are going to expand out. And you, <laughs> you are an ambitious farmer. Because you just don't want to survive. If you just want to survive, you're going to do this. Because you'll be happy, you'll be fed and happy. However, what you want to do, what's eventually what you want to occur is, like, you want to expand out. You want this to be your territory. And they want to do the same thing. So they're the ones who are going to be, well, they're going to claim all of this suddenly. Like, it's, it becomes a little bit more of, 
a little bit more complex than that because suddenly we're close to each other. What do we do? Like, do we try to work together? Do we not work together? Do we expand? Do we do we kind of aggressively expand? Like, what do you do when a guy does this? Like, he's just rapidly expanded. He's claimed all this territory as his own. You've kind of claimed some more woods. He's claimed the coast. Well, this guy over here is perfectly happy with just his farm. He just wants all of this. Actually, he wants to be a nice, happy, self-sustaining farmer. He's going to do like this. That's all he's done. He That's all he wants, and that's all he cares about. What do you do here? <laughs> 50 by 60 of 100 acre plots is almost exactly all the air. Yeah, we don't... Like, that was another thing I didn't want to do. Like, here's all the arable land of fucking Iceland. <laughs> so, instead of this, it's going to be... Because if we do, like, another, let's say... That, that was actually one thing I was kind of hesitant about. It was like, I don't want to be like, here's literally all of Iceland. Because you don't think Iceland is big, but it's also like, not that big. <laughs> so if we do render, we do a checkerboard, not 50, but like maybe 100. Maybe 150. Like, if we do 150, for example, that's a bit too much. Like, if we do 100, this is just your initial home. Like, this is just your initial place. Uh, we will be the Red Family this time. We've claimed this particular tile. Blue Family has claimed this tile. And we know the Green Family up here has claimed this. And, I don't know, the, the Purple Family is over here. Each of these about a hundred acres. So this is going to be, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. That's still a little bit too much. Fuck. The non arable land would be a 5,000 by 5,000. Because you also, here's also one thing it gets a little bit confusing because Iceland during this era was actually a lot better. better. But the Vikings happened and they deforested a lot of it and caused like mass erosion and actually limited the amount of area that was actually like arable. So it gets a little bit odd. So we can bring it down to 50. No, 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 no. If we want. We want four, four squares, you know, roughly two kilometers, two kilometers equal four squares. That means we're going to have to do 100 acres. So if we roughly do something like this, so two kilometers for four squares is 100 acre, 100 acre squares, I should 100 acre squares. Arguably, we can even cut it down to be something like this even. Like, here's your little patch of land. Fuck you. So this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 10 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, So about... If we really wanted to make this, like... So about 10 by, like, maybe like this. Blue kind of got shafted out, but we'll put blue there. And if we use this as a basic idea, it's going to be about, we can get to each other pretty easily. And we're all in this together, but this is our little patch of land. This is our little, little, little our little, our personal Idaho. But maybe he wants to just expand there because he's perfectly happy. Green wants to expand deeper into this territory and do something like this. And purple over here is being real aggressive and he wants to claim all of this territory for himself. 
because there is a, I don't fucking know, we'll put a river here or something, we'll put a, like, there's a river that separates like this. And purple wants to claim all of that, but there's only a little river right here. No, no, where, where, where do we expand? Well, we want fish, obviously, so maybe we do something like this. But we also want wood, so we're going to go up here. So we may have our territory look like this. We were kind of set along these rivers, and now we deal with it. Making little claims, and this might be little claims, and we might come to conflict with the purple, or we want to get some more territory out, uh, out, out east, so we might do something like that and kind of go on his territory. His turf, all right. All right. <laughs> uh, the whole... Maybe there's just horrible borders everywhere where you just can't expand anymore. Yeah, that might, that might be a thing. So actually, what we can't do... Oh, Jesus, that didn't sound good. <laughs> What we can do is, with those maps, we can just add in a bunch of squares, which are just like, this entire section is just shit. It's awful. It is awful, terrible land that you can't really grow anything. It's mostly just used for pasture land, and we want to kind of get in. We're getting into fights with people. So if we do this, if everything's about 100 acres, so yeah, we, we, we make things about, it every, about 100 acres each. 100 acre squares, but most of the land isn't actually that very good, so ha ha ha, we've, we, we've solved the issue, uh, which brings me here, so we have about 100 acre, 100 acre squares, uh, arable, arable slash non-arable. And you also are going to probably have, like, here's an entire section just dedicated to, like, we're working together or something like that. So Christianity, we have retirement mechanics. We got the 2D6 set up. We have the honor economy and the conflict it makes you want to get more honor. Uh, for local formation, local. So we do that. I'll have to make like a sample area. That's going to be like a requirement. So maybe like we do this. We want to claim land. Which does make me think that we're going to need. Mm -hmm. So yeah, here's what we're going to be raising. Driven to higher ground. Fishing and rent. Men away on fishing. Women ran the farm to do work. I want Viking children to go to school. Boys learn to tax the men. Girls learn helping their mothers. Most Viking men return from raiding for harvest and winter over, the, over on their farm. So, you're going to be a wealthy man, though. That's how the family begins. So, thousands of Irish women who were enslaved by the Vikings brought them overseas to colonize Iceland. Many of them were taken from Ireland, Scotland, by Nordic warriors from thousand years ago and settled in Iceland. Then, was Iceland full of Vikings? Yes. Uh, 
The little known role of slavery. Okay, yeah, no. Um, do Icelandic household. Uh, Icelandic uh, ancient Viking households. Because roughly speaking, what we can assume is there's going to be one, the, the man... Two, there's going to be one, the woman, the woman. And then you're obviously going to have children. And you're going to have slaves. Slaves are always important. So, probably a standard family. I don't know. It's a large number of families. Might have a uh, number of families, agricultural lifestyle, early nights and early mornings, younger fit, working Vikings, be up to cock crows, tending animals, working the land. So you might have, if it's multiple families, let's assume it's four families. Let's just say that. Four families. So, four families each. And let's say a standard family is going to be... Two plus two point five children. Let's just let's just call a spade a spade. You're gonna be two point plus two point five children. Plus let's say for example, um each family, so we're roughly already looking at so if we have so we're looking at about eight adults plus eight to ten children. And this is just a, this is a small, like, this is a small farm, eight adults, eight to ten children, maybe, like, a dozen slaves? Would that be, like, would that be accurate? Um... So, uh, Icelandic sagas and the elders written down uh, for most early Norwegian history. These events have passed down. Uh, was out fighting off some other Vikings. His wife lit a little light that was visible to old find his way back home. We also know on one occasion how so dim when and when entered he could see could see and Getter could surprise him by tripping him. Other tales uh, like a privacy when night Getter was swimming in his hideaway in Rick, uh, Rickbeard. And after everyone was asleep, bathed in the hot pool and went to sleep, went to sleep naked. During the night, his his bedclothes fell off, and in the morning, he was found by his own owner's daughter and servant woman. Apparently, when I get her, the strong is lying there naked. He's big framed all right, but I'm astonished how poorly and dowdy he is between his leg. It's not in proportion. Ah, even even in history, we need to make fun of someone's dick. Um, so let's see, how many families, like, how many families are we looking at here? Like, uh, Viking longhouses, uh, let's see, Viking longhouses of families. How, how many families could we... Crowded, cozy home. How many families live? Oh. This is the main building of Muni and would sometimes house up to 30 to 50 people. 30 to 50 people? Okay, so that kind of um, changes that number. So we're looking at maybe like six families. So like a small farm may have like 12 to... 14 to 6, like, 14 to 16 children, like, 
This is a small farm, by the way. So, and at least, like, this is gonna this is gonna pervert my entire thing. Average number of uh, average numbers of slaves in Iceland per family. Like, <laughs> how the fuck are you supposed to answer this question? There is no good answer to these questions. I just have to Google them and rely on History Channel to tell me. Like, uh, ten percent of the Viking age, evidence of slavery in the Viking Age. How about Iceland? It's up to two thirds of Iceland's female founding population had Gaelic origins. One third of Nor Nordic roots. Suggesting that many Nordic men in Iceland are children with women who are likely taken from rays and sexual motives. A source of skilled labor. Have Vikings treated slaves. So we have nothing on it. We have literally nothing on it. Thanks, Iceland. So. Let's assume we're going to have about six. Roughly speaking. You're going to have about six families. So we're gonna have about about six families, and you're gonna be probably the dominant family. There's gonna be probably like one dominant family. They're gonna be the head of the house. That's who they are. They are the the head of the head of the house. They're probably the one who owns the boat. Everyone knows everyone they own the boat, but that's kind of who they are. And i.e., who you are gonna be playing as. Or maybe you play the other families. Again, it's these it's a community. You're all this together. Slaves wise. We don't have a number, like like um Do we have like a number for it? Do we have like an idea? Do we have uh Iceland? The Turkish abductions, yes. Um, for all trade as a prize of the plunder. Grelia was killed while he's trying to defend a thrall woman from men who accused her of theft. Proved of his action, reckoned him as a martyr, and canonized him as Saint Halvar, the patron saint of Oslo. Uh, existence of a caste system could experience a lust. They could be freed by their master in time, or freed by will, or even by their own freedom. Freedmen. Slaves and freedmen. He still owned allegiance to his former master. Had to vote according to the former master's wishes. A freedman to lose his allegiance to uh, become full freedman. Freedman has no descendants. His former master inherited his land and property. Well, the Rawls and freedmen don't have much economic political power. They're given Vagild or man's price for unlawfully killing a slave. Era of Viking raids. Okay. Okay. We can roughly say, we will we will we'll make a rough guesstimate here, because that's all we can do. We can only guess. Is probably there's gonna be for every one one adult, we can say maybe there's gonna be three slaves. Or three three thralls. Now, what does a thrall actually do? Thralls work the field, they work things. So roughly speaking, you're aiming at about probably like two to three. You're indebted, you don't have much. It's not like you have weapons or anything. You're kind of fucked in that regard. But you again, you can buy your freedom. And at the end of the day, you would probably want to work at the guys who are at least feeding you at this location, rather than like, I'm going to tough it out in Iceland. That's not going to go very well. <laughs> That's not going to end very well for you at all.
And if the players want to have individual families, they can probably play multiple families on the same farmstead as they kind of go back and forth. And some people are kind of adhering to this and some people are adhering to that. And of course, people are going to live in your longhouse with you and some people aren't going to live in your longhouse. It's generally a, we're expanding the community out. That's the main goal. So six, we'll, we'll do four to six families. So four to six families per longhouse. If we do four to six families per longhouse, that does actually give quite a few. Because why I was curious about that, seeing like what characters we can do. So we could probably call them just the household more than anything. Like. Oh, sweet Jesus. Okay. So, we have the, the Jarl, the Huskarl, Carl, a Friedman. And, obviously, we have a Thrall. And we have a Thrall. So, roughly speaking, like... Like an Earl? I mean... Only one... In Iceland... Iceland for his efforts during the ages so technically that wouldn't be correct it would be you would be called chieftains like that's what would have to be the case is that you would be chieftains and so that means you would go down Thane. So, actually, Icelandic. So, Huskar, Iceland, uh, Inside Men, or Home Men, Thralls, so Free Men, not to be confused with Thralls, is it? Not lone Runners and Men Not Tyne, they voluntary in service to another, as opposed, so. Alright, so you're pretty much standard there. So that, okay, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. So as a, you're pretty much a guy who serves another guy. All right, so what what do we call the other guy? That's the question. What the fuck do we call the other guy? Thingman? No, that's not right. Bird, the yeah, Scandinavian. Personal armed companions, Hidman, Haskells. Um, I guess Icelandic chieftain would be the correct. I guess chieftains would be the... Because during the Commonwealth... Well, they had fled, perfectly Norwegian Tristan laws, unique structure. Lead leaders were the chieftains, so... Or the Gaudi. But they weren't really super... I guess the formal establishment of it. So, the Gaudi of the 13... So, if, yeah, if we do the chieftains, I guess chieftain would be the technical title of it. But then what do you, I guess that would just be the case, that someone would just be the chieftain of the village, or... Yeah, okay, so that's just who you would be. Someone is this person simply because he is the person who runs everything. He is the we've elected this man the chieftain because he is the chieftain. And Viking king, so this chieftains, who never held any prominent role, most entirely autonomous until Gustav the First, uh, Norse chieftains. So 
the term would be more you would be more considered to be a person of this you have this power by virtue of being this person so the mature warrior captain of chiefly vessel house carl lowest ring of elite soldiers population of a settle of the of a settlement so ninth century so regional kings all three strata key takeaway three tier social so yeah you just be you would be a it would be you as a king and here are a bunch of your followers you aren't really a follower necessarily you're just a person who is strong enough to kind of bring people together earn so the draw was an scribe not inherited one these roles were separate from from warlords to kings based on merit from the earl class sometimes called chieftains yeah so you would just be a chieftain so the classic concept of like a Jarl. <laughs> like a Duke or Earl. Kind of Yeah, so you would just literally just be a chieftain, or you would be the uh, equivalent of roughly a Jarl. Like, you don't really have a name. Uh, you don't have a specific title. You just have a thing that just says, this is who you are. You are just the person. Like, that's just who you kind of are. Like, you're not... Yeah, okay, so that's fine. So one person would just be the, the chief by virtue of being the chief. So that works. So rough, roughly speaking, this would be... So you can either be... So this would be the main family, you know, sworn men... Carls will just be free men. That's not what I wanted. Um, hmm. Yeah, so you would, okay. If we go under this idea, this would just be the free men. So these are just the free men. These are kind of like this, the men in serve. We could call these kind of guys the, the men in service. These would be thralls. So you could technically play anybody from any of these. But those are the rough... Roughly speaking, these would be your social classes. Everyone's part of the same farm. So if we bring you up here... Cool, 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 cool. We bring you down here for rating. We do everything seasonal. We do things seasonal in which we break it down into summer, spring, i.e. the big rating seasons. We do autumn for... Uh, yeah, autumn and, uh, and winter. Which, roughly speaking, we don't do jack shit. So actually, Icelandic harvest. Icelandic harvest season. When is the harvest season in Iceland? Um, so, end of spring. So pretty much autumn. So when fall, fall springs. So it would be summer. So winter. Into spring into summer, into autumn, or fall, technically, I guess. 
So. Yeah, I guess this would... Because you would harvest... Harvest season would be here in fall, and then you'd get, then you sit for winter. So roughly speaking, like just purely summer plus spring. Spring is when things, so actually I should say is early spring. So it would be late spring plus summer plus summer is rating, is rating time. Fall. And winter is drama time. There we go. Then we can base it off the seasons, and then if we base it off the seasons, everything should be working there pretty well, and things should be pretty solid. So we put that right there. We put you right there. Okay. All right. Okay, I'm feeling a lot better now. Feeling a lot better. It doesn't seem like a lot happened today, but things did happen. And we've put things, we put all the pieces together for the future, which is the important part. And on Wednesday, I will have this somewhat formalized so I can put everything in a big document and we can write everything out. And it's going to work just great. All right. I'm feeling good. So thank you all for watching. My name is Notepad Anon. If you have anything to say or you'd like to talk, feel free to ping me on my Discord. You know where to go. Uh, if there's any other questions, don't hesitate to ask.